Special Operations. Covert Ops. Espionage. The Team House. With your hosts, Jack Murphy and David Park. Sean, I, I would like to, you know, continue on that line a little yeah. bit and dive a little bit deeper into your journalistic yeah. work about Operation Anaconda and some of the articles you wrote about John Chapman and Britt Slavinsky yes. and the controversies around the Medal of Honor um, being awarded yeah. for that battle. Yeah, I mean, this was an, sort of an, an onion that I've peeled um, on several occasions now. Each, each time I write the story of that sort of battle within a battle, if you like, um, I, I've, I've come to a new level of understanding about it, really. Um, the first time I attempted it for, for Army Times, I mean, I really I didn't know what I didn't know about it. And just to, for the benefit of, of the viewers and listeners, it, it's a very complex little fight to explain. Um, uh, and whenever I try to do it off the top of my head, I, 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 I generally re realize that I'm misremembering it somehow. But basically, um, uh, this, was, this was in the context of an extraordinarily successful um, special operations mission uh, in, in uh, Operation Anaconda that basically saved the operation, which was um, the, uh, the, the guy who headed up what was called Advanced Force Operations for JSOC in Afghanistan. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. A, um, a Delta Force Lieutenant Colonel called Pete Blaber had, um, had the imagination to uh, infiltrate several teams of sort of uh, several recon teams uh, into the mountains uh, around the, the, the Shagakot Valley. Basically, in the, uh, he got them in literally, you know, behind enemy lines without them being detected at all uh, because they went in on foot or, or in one case um, uh, they went in uh, uh, on uh, sort of uh, all-terrain vehicles, like, you know, those little sort of three-wheel, four-wheel... Uh, uh, oh, like ATVs. Uh, like ATVs, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, and this had been incredibly successful. He got them in place before each hour and, uh, that, you know, before the start of the battle. And uh, they were... They owned basically the heights and were able to, uh, undetected by the Al-Qaeda fighters, uh, they were able to call in uh, some pretty devastating airstrikes that kept uh, the infantry forces, uh, you know, from the, who were down on the valley floor from suffering greater casualties. Um, and this, this was very successful. Um, but then sort of, the chain of command above Blaber in, in joints, because this was Joint Special Operations Command, um, wanted more control over the operation, basically. Mm -hmm. who, who was running it at the time? Do you remember? Uh, the command, the, well, the commander of JSOC was uh, Del Daly, but the, uh, the, the commander of the task force in Afghanistan was an Air Force general called Trabone, mm -hmm. uh, Brigadier General Trabone. And... Um, uh, and so, basically, they they forced Blaber to start pulling out um, the Delta Force and uh, Team Six. So it was like two Delta Force and one Team Six recce teams had had infiltrated the 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 the, the valley, um, and and were just in hide sites watching and and calling in calling in. Um, and in fact, the SEAL, the SEAL Team 6 recce team had saved the operation from disaster uh, right at the start because they had sort of snuck in and 
found that the very spot where they had planned to put their OP, their observation post, um, was occupied by uh, an Al-Qaeda group. <coughs> and uh, they sent back photographs that they took of, of these guys, um, which I, I have some of them in, in my book. And uh, basically, they, uh, with the help of an AC-130, they, it, was a, it was a Dishka heavy machine gun position, mm -hmm. which they destroyed um, just, you know, an hour or something before the uh, helicopters were supposed to fly into the valley, carrying the infantry right under the nose of that Dishka position. Right. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, so that, that, you know, the Blaber's, Blaber's efforts had really proven their worth. Um, and people started, you know, at least the perception that, uh, the folks I interviewed had was that, uh, other, other people that didn't have a role in that particular mission had started to get jealous mm -hmm. and um and uh the regular uh sort of team six maneuver force if you like that was back at, at bagram um now blaber was coming under pressure and then was directly ordered to put uh the team six guys in and Brit and pull out the the, the three teams that he had mm -hmm. um and in fact uh i actually flew out of the Shahikot Valley with the Juliet team um, uh, from that Juliet Delta reconnaissance team on an 160th uh, MH47. Um, so I think I can, I, I mean, I can say that I, because when I did my cover story for uh, on the 160th in, in the mid 90s, I, I flew on a little bird as part of that. So I can say I've, I've flown with the 160th in, in peacetime and in uh, and in uh, combat mission um uh not not by any plan um but that's just the way i i didn't know that what they were sending a 160th bird to pick us up until it landed mm -hmm. um uh and i didn't know who these guys were on the, on the uh, atvs it, i mean mm -hmm. it took me a couple of years to, to figure that to figure that all out um uh but anyway the the takagar uh uh fight uh, basically, Blaber had 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 taken a lot of time with these three teams to get them fully immersed in the uh, in how to move in the mountains. Um, uh, basically, he'd, the two Delta teams here already had them uh, basically run sort of like training missions, if you like, environmental reconnaissance. He called it. Mm -hmm. um, in the valleys near the Shahikot, just just so that they got a sense of how far they could move mm -hmm. over what periods of time, that that sort of thing. Um, he and he was a big believer that the worst thing you can do is is use the helicopters mm -hmm. to to fly anywhere close to where you want to be. Well, that's, Basically, he, that, that's a lesson I think Delta took away from Mogadishu about being careful yeah. about putting helicopters up over mm -hmm. areas where you may have enemy fighters right. and anti-aircraft. And, and you're also, I mean, when you're flying through the canyons, they have lookout points, you know, static yeah. surveillance and stuff and, like and your, that. Your sky, they your, radio ahead and say, hey, you have troops yeah. moving in your direction. You're, you're skylining yeah. your OPs. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, but, but the, you know, basically the, the, the JSOC trainer command tried to take command of this operation away from from blaber mm -hmm. and uh they put in um uh a, a, a uh, they wanted to put in a couple of uh uh team six uh elements uh in and one of them they wanted to put in at the top of takagar mountain which was the the most dominant terrain feature of the valley in the southeastern corner of the valley it's the highest mountain um, and uh, it was an obvious place to put to put a, a recce element if you could get it up there, mm -hmm. but you'd want to be careful doing it. Mm -hmm. The uh, 
uh, long story short, that this, and it is a very long and involved story. So I mean, I I, I apologize for this. I mean, you guys can cut me off whenever you think I'm no, getting I know. in the weeds because it. I've, I've I mean, I've, I'm I'm going off of memory. If you've read the articles more recently, you'll have to correct me uh, from from time to time. But um, the because I wrote about this in my book, um, and I I got it. I'd say ninety eight percent accurate you know, accurate uh, in, in, in uh, maybe, maybe what I wrote is basically 100% accurate. There was one thing I didn't, I remember not understanding, which I, we can maybe get to in, in a moment. Um, and then I wrote about it again for the New York Times. Um, and, and Newsweek. And then I wrote about it a third time for, for Newsweek as the sort of the controversy just took twists and turns over the years following mm -hmm. that. Um, but basically, uh, uh, the seals were were supposed to go up to the top of Takagar on foot after landing at an offset location a couple of kilometers away. Um, uh, what that meant was that if they'd encountered any sort of enemy, they'd they'd be on their feet with their weapons, and they'd you know they could always call for exfil, or they could retreat, go to ground somewhere, or they could overwhelm one enemy force they encountered, uh, you know, with, with fire and maneuver. Um, but a series of odd things happened. Uh, there was an airstrike that went in that, that delayed their, um, their, uh, their infill. And then um, one of the helicopters broke. Uh, and all of that meant that there wasn't time for them to conduct their approach up the mountainside under cover of darkness. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, Brit Slabinski, um, uh, who was the, the, the sort of the team leader, um, called up his chain and he recommended bumping, uh, you know, 24 hours uh, and doing it the next night. And he was basically pressured to, to go now. Mm -hmm. and. And the, the end result was that the 160th flew, and this, you know, I, you know, look, I'm not a professional soldier or special operator. So, I mean, I, I can only tell you what I was told. And I was told by numerous people that, and you guys have sort of just alluded to it now, you're, you're never supposed to infill by air directly onto your OP. Right. Um, so this is this ended up being the the course of action that was chosen, and right. uh, when they got to the when the helicopter came to a hover over the top of the mountain, um, uh, they realized that uh, Al Qaeda was already there. I mean, it, it it was the perfect place to put an OP. So just like the other SEAL Team Six element had you know had found out the the enemy's not stupid, and they put their OP there just like you would. So. Uh, uh, so the helicopter came under fire and, um, uh, so the guys in the back just tell, you know, tell the pilot, go, 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 let's, let's get out of here. And they, they, they fly off. Um, but, uh, uh, a seal called Neil Roberts falls out of the back of the, uh, of, of the helicopter. There's all, there's a competing theory. It's not really i think that important one way or the other uh, the, a competing theory that i heard is that when the shout went from the sort of the the crew chief to the uh, uh at at the rear ramp at the ramp to the pilots in the cockpit go 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 meaning you know let's he, let's he get out of it right. he took it the wrong way and was like oh I, i've got to go you know and jumped out so either either way he um he 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 falls out, um, and there's an incredibly dramatic piece of flying where the 160th crew, as their um, uh, the some of the lubricant were hoses were um, basically shot up and and leaking, and the lubricant is sort of flying all over the place, and the helicopters machine you know machinery the the rotors are you know in danger of seizing up um and the controls are seizing up because uh uh the you know there isn't enough it's really oil i mean it was the oil lubricant that that was 
And um, it was a brilliant piece of flying to, uh, to get that helicopter and not crash it. And there's a crew chief pouring oil, opening cans of oil like you would open sort of cans of you know olive oil or canned tomatoes or something and pouring the oil into a funnel that you can manually add this stuff to it you know in a pinch um and uh every time and and they realize that a guy has flown has fallen out and as they're sort of descending into the valley they're trying the pilot is trying to turn the helicopter around to go back and get neil roberts every time he tries to turn it around uh, the control sees up, so he realizes he's, he's going to have to crash land this thing very quickly. Um, and, it, you know, it was a really brilliant piece of flying that he managed to put it down. He got it several kilometers north. In fact, it, it turned out to be just about 500 meters or something north of where I was sitting on, on you know, at the north end of the battlefield. Crash landed it. Um, I'm embarrassed to say I don't have a clear memory of this thing crash landing. I was probably fast asleep, snuggled up in my sleeping bag in, in the wadi that we were in when, when this happened. And, um, uh, and so then another team, sort of an, another helicopter comes out. I mean, there's all kinds of chaos is going on. I mean, one of the sort of key parts of this story is, is how, how jumbled the communications were. I mean, it's a classic example of Clausewitzian friction on the battlefield mm -hmm. um, and uh, basically uh, to their credit uh, Slobinski and and his teammates um, want to go straight back up and 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 look for Roberts um, but it takes a while for uh, for the you know another helicopter to, to come out and get them and then they they have to take the the crew from the original helicopter that can't fly anywhere anymore and mm -hmm. take them back to Gardez because the whole AFO operation was being run out of Gardez, which is about 10 clicks away, um, 10 kilometers away from there. Then fly, then fly the, uh, the SEAL team back up to the top of the mountain. By the time they get there, I mean, all that, you know, all the evidence suggests that Roberts was already dead by that point, mm -hmm. but they, they pile out of the helicopter and they immediately are taken under in very heavy fire. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, they, they can't, there's no sign of Roberts. They sort of realize they've bitten off more, more than they can chew. And, um, guys are start to fall. Um, and, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, air force, uh, sort of the JTAC, for them uh basically the the guy who is there to call in airstrikes um and uh, and other fires um from the 24th special tactics squadron which is the uh air force's sort of ground special missions unit um their equivalent of delta or seal team six um uh he he's he he falls and uh, you know appears to be dead um and uh, the other guys are getting wounded. And so they basically bail over the, the side of the mountain um, uh, and, and sort of keep sliding down uh, until they basically reach a rock overhang. And, uh, and, and they sort of, then they're safe. And eventually they, they're uh, sort of, they're picked up a um, uh, long time later. But the, the controversy surrounds Chapman, because um, uh, Slabinski didn't didn't have time to, uh, you know, or you know, the the ability under heavy fire to really sort of check all of his vital signs and so forth. Um, and uh, but uh, he said he, he, I believe, and again, I'm going from from memory here that he he could see the laser from his rifle. Um, pointing and when he'd first seen him lying there, it was going up and down with his breathing. And then it, it stopped going up and down. Um, uh, so uh, then they send out a, a lot of 
the, the rest of the immediate Takagar battle, uh, and then I'll get to the super controversial part, then they send out some rangers uh, who, because the, 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 the jock, the Joint Operations Center in, uh, in Bagram, doesn't really have a full command of what's going on, doesn't fully understand what's, what's happening. And they alert their quick reaction force, which is a uh, sort of a ranger uh, platoon minus, um, and send it out on, uh, uh, on uh, well, really a ranger platoon, but uh, only, they send it out on, on Chinooks as well. It gets, it, it flies in. They have no idea what's happened on the top of that mountain already. Uh -huh. And so they fly in and they get shot up uh -huh. as well. Um, they lose several ranges. There's some very dramatic and, and sort of heartrending footage of, uh, of of that helicopter coming into land. You can sort of find it on the internet. I think we had it in the New York Times mm -hmm. uh, story. I can't, I, I can't recall. Maybe, maybe not, but it's certainly uh, it's certainly out there on the internet um, of 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 the helicopter landing. You know, and the, and the rangers charging down the ramp, and you see two, you know two or three of them just dropping immediately. They one of the crew chiefs was shot in the helicopter. Um, uh, you know, an incredible uh, leadership challenge for a platoon leader to be in that situation. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they handle themselves very, very well. Uh, in the end, um, you know, there's a sort of fight. They, they clear the top of the mountain. Um, then there's some other Al-Qaeda forces sort of start to threaten them and in the end they get pulled out at, at, at the end they but what becomes clear you know is that um what people had assumed had happened on the top of the mountain maybe didn't happen uh -huh. because um there was a predator overhead uh for much of the tachograph not for the very beginning of it but for much of it and at a time when the slabinsky team had had made their sort of their second attempt to to get to the top of the mountain had you know to look for roberts and then had been basically uh sort of retreated under fire off off the top of the mountain um but before the rangers had shown up uh there's clearly a mano a mano gunfight right. going there, on there is there is uh, one person I'm, from that team who is moving yeah. to contact well, somebody, yeah, somebody is shooting somebody and, and vice versa on right. the top of the mountain. Right. And once that became clear, of course, that posed a lot of awkward questions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, you know, I mean, we could talk about this for hours, but mm -hmm. I, you know, I just looked at the time. Um, uh, and so I uh, basically, uh, the all the evidence points to the fact that John Chapman was still alive mm -hmm. uh, at, at, at the, uh, you know, for, for um, hours, and for, for hours. hours. Yes. And, and, and fighting. Yes. Um, and, uh, and according to the air force, he, um, uh, uh, the air force eventually put in for a medal of honor for him. Uh -huh. um, and, uh, uh, you know, this this was based partly because of the criteria for the Medal of Honor aren't just that you do some incredible sort of balls out combat. You have to some, you know, it also has to involve, you know, doing stuff for your comrades right. or, or whatever. I, I mean, I can't remember the exact criteria, but it um, uh, and and so. Uh, they basically made the claim that uh the only reason he was, he was finally killed was he was trying to he heard the the ranger qrf helicopter coming in and exposed himself to try to provide covering to, fire to suppress <coughs> yeah yeah exactly right and and um and that's when he was fatally shot right um the, the story I wrote for the New York Times really advanced the version that I had in Not a Good Day to Die. But, and I wrote it with Christopher Drew um, of the New York Times. He's an absolutely world-class reporter. Um, uh, I think he's down teaching college in, uh, in Louisiana now. But he, 
Um, uh, you know, he's he's written some well-known stories and books and so forth. Just a terrific, terrific guy to work with. Um, and uh, and the story I wrote with with Chris was after I I been tipped off that uh, that the Air Force was was going to try for a Medal of Honor, mm -hmm. and that they sort of relooked uh, the uh, they basically applied you know. Uh, 2016 technology to 2002 footage um, uh, and, you know, could now trace Chapman's movements much more carefully and so forth, mm -hmm. pixel by pixel sort mm -hmm. of thing. Um, and, you know, this was creating some awkwardness with, within JSOC and SEAL Team 6. I mean, the whole thing created a lot of awkwardness, just mm -hmm. like just like Mogadishu created awkwardness between parts of Delta and parts of the Rangers um, in, uh, in 92, ni um, 93 rather, uh, uh, Takagar created uh, some issues between uh, Team 6 and, uh, and the Rangers and, and AFSOC mm -hmm. um, and, and, and 24th SDS in, in particular. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, so that was that story, and then the um, the Newsweek story basically ad advanced it again. I got access to some more of the video and and sort of the Air Force's uh, what the Air Force was doing with the video, and um, and it it detailed um, the Naval Special Warfare Command's role in tr basically trying to prevent Chapman from getting his Medal of Honor. Right. And, and ultimately, um, you know, sort of almost cutting a quid pro quo sort of thing, deal where they, the Air Force said, okay, well, if I'm, I mean, the Navy said, if you're going to, or the NSW, Naval Special Warfare said, if you're going to put Chapman in, we're going to, we're going to put Slabinski in for a Medal of Honor. Right. Um, and in the end, both of those individuals received the Medals of Honor. Chapman, obviously, posthumously. So that's that's the Takagar story in a, in in a very big nutshell. I, I'm sure you've seen uh, the narrated, kind of highlighted version of the of the Pred feed or the, the Chapman battle on YouTube or something else. Yeah. Do you find that to be an accurate narration of the events? Yeah, this is the Air Force one, right? That 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 they, that accompanied the uh, mm -hmm. the award. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I I I think so. I mean, it's 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 a few years since I watched it now, yeah. but um, I don't remember watching it and thinking, oh, that that's a long shot, or they got that wrong, or right. something. I mean, I I, I don't want to swear to every single word in it, but because uh, uh, they certainly didn't ask me, sure. um, but. Uh, uh, but I, I don't remember thinking that they that they'd gotten it wrong. So, so in a so in a generalized kind of timeline, not to get salty about any of this, but.